so I was looking back at the year feeling a little disappointed. Nothing so far had impressed me like how Persona 5, Nier Automata, or Gravity Rush 2 did for 2017. That is until now. Greece is exactly the type of game I've been looking for this entire year. By that, I mean an original game with a high level of artistic prowess. It's this puzzle platformer from a brand new indie developer called Nomada Studio. I mean, just look at this art. It really is the next big artsy indie game. Where CrossCode was more on the mechanical side, Greece is very much on the experimentation side. By that, I'm specifically referring to how it focuses on providing new and impactful approaches to design. In terms of examples, I'd have to say it's more of a trailblazer like Journey or Braid than as a gameplay first deal like Cave Story or Super Meat Boy. Anyway, let's start the review portion of the review. Oh wait, one more thing. It's my first Switch game review. It's finally the portable future and Nintendo are hip again. It's like a pendulum. It's always swinging back and forth. Okay, for real this time. On to the review. So you play as this girl named Grease, and sure, I'm not a huge fan of the weird stick legs and arms. However, it luckily doesn't stick out at all during the gameplay. Besides that, this game is obviously an aesthetic masterpiece. All the artistry and the landscapes and coloring just astound me. It's not even just aesthetics. As the game progresses, color slowly returns to the world and that influences the rest of the game. Architecture gets repaired, environments change based on the new color at play, and we get more mechanics tied to the environment. There's this beautiful interconnectivity to the gameplay, presentation, and general atmosphere that I just love about Greece. It's a subtlety that just goes to show how far we've come in the realm of games as a form of art. The visuals constantly shift in beautiful ways that made me appreciate having the ability to see color. Every additional color gets introduced very distinctly, and they really took the time to make each color stand out. We start off with a monochrome wasteland that reminded me of the deathly white desert from the thematically similar Yume Nikki. Admittedly, this is closer to a reverse Yume Nikki, and I'm sure you'll know what I mean if you play both games. So yeah, in Greece, you start off in a monochromatic landscape and like I said earlier, you slowly gather color back into the world. It's a great concept that's executed fantastically. You get to see the visuals as a sign of story progress and each color adds to the art in meaningful ways. Personally, I like the rainy blue section the most, but the red desert section isn't far behind. It's all just plain gorgeous. The gameplay is that of a simple puzzle platformer. It seems that the developers wanted to create a game that's easy to pick up and play. I'm completely fine with that despite my love for more challenging games. These easier games open the medium up to more people just like the Wii did back in the day. I don't particularly like how the medium has become some sort of weird elitist club, though that's a discussion for another time. Mechanically, the game is very straightforward to the point where it can be compared to the likes of Journey. Though it doesn't reduce features to the degree of Journey, it follows the intent of what Journey was trying to do. Standard mechanics are in place, but the real focus is on a compelling, emotional adventure. The gameplay is there to convey emotions and to add to the story rather than provide any real challenge. Abilities are unlocked over time to deal with newly introduced obstacles. For example, the red color results in beautiful sandstorms that blow Grease away. The mechanic is presented and eventually she gets the ability to morph into a rigid wall in order to withstand the impact. Puzzles come in many different forms. Usually, they're pretty straightforward and add a little variety to the gameplay. Oftentimes, the game has you gather balls of light gated off by puzzles in order to progress. Luckily, the puzzles don't break the flow of the game as opposed to the more challenging or just plain boring puzzles like in CrossCode which falls in the challenging category, and God of War 1, which has awful puzzles that don't even deserve to exist. I really care about flow in games, so I'm glad that the developers did such a good job keeping the game flowing so well. The game clocked in at almost 3 hours sharp, and I feel that that's just great. I've played too many games to really care about how many hours I can get out of a game. It's meaningless to me, as 3 hours in this game left much more of an impression on me than all 35 hours of Horizon Zero Dawn. This is yet another sidestepping discussion for another time. Grease's story amazed me. From beginning to end, the game provides a simple yet stylish adventure about an internal struggle. It seems to be a story that deals with facing the past and moving on, though it's literally about a girl on a vague journey of some sort. Grease is a game filled with symbolism that's tied to mechanics. This is yet another way the team at Nomada Studio figured out how to connect everything together. It's also a story that's open to interpretation, which is great. However, it's more straightforward than the more out there examples like the ever-glorious Killer7. 
Finally, the music is as fantastic as the visuals. The developers knew exactly when to amp things up and when to slow things down. The fine balance between ambient and compelling music gives for a good contrast, highlighting the calmer times compared to the huge emotional scenes of loss and perseverance. I found that the music complemented the experience perfectly in an optimal emotional response sort of way. The true beauty of a compelling, minimalist story tied with absolutely stunning visuals and emotionally resonant music make for a genuine masterpiece. Grease is an absolute gem of a work that definitely deserves your attention. I highly recommend it to those open to art games. Thanks for watching this video on my descent into chronic depression. The original review was written for Dark Station, but it's worded totally different for the most part. You should check it out if you want a more sophisticated review or if you want more information on the game. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like it and consider subscribing to the channel. If you want more, here are some of my other videos. Anyway, I'll see you all next time when I review my life as a reviewer.